Okay, so um, so again, if we integrate our um, our wave function when we have a plane wave solution, we integrate our wave function squared psi star psi uh, between a and b to positions in the x direction to locations. Then what we get is psi star psi is equal to a squared times e to the i k x times e to the minus i k x and that part just uh, goes to unity so we basically are integrating one um, from a to b which just gives us b minus a and um, uh, and uh, we know that that is equal to uh, b minus a times the density and since uh, the density is defined up here number of particles per unit length and so we identify uh, the amplitude coefficient a squared or the square of that. Remember this can be, a can be complex so when I say a squared that's a star times a. Okay, so we identify that with the uh, with the density or the number of particles per unit length. Okay, so if we have a part, if we have a beam of particles uh, and the particles all have mass m and the particles are all moving at the same speed v, okay, then we can uh, define sort of an intensity for this beam um, which we can define basically to be the particles per unit time particles per second so uh, normally we define intensity as the particle as the sort of the number of something per unit time per unit area but since a plane wave um, what we'll be talking about today um, since we assume that the beam is uniform in the x and y direction if it's moving to the x to the sorry, it's uniform in the y and z direction, so if it, the beam is moving um, along the x direction, then by definition a plane wave is, is uniform in a plane perpendicular to the direction of motion, so in this case that's y and z, and so we don't really have to worry about area because it's completely um, it's completely uniform. In any case, um, so we, we if you think about it, the, the number of particles per per unit time i is equal to the number of particles per unit um, uh, is equal to the number of particles per unit length times the velocity of each of the particles if we multiply both the left and right hand side of this equation by the mass of the particles m then we get mi is equal to uh, rho times mv and mv is just the um, classical momentum three momentum p um, which is also by de Broglie's relationships h bar k Okay, so in the end what we get is that mi is equal to a squared times h bar k, rho is equal to h bar, is equal to a squared as we showed on the last uh, view graph. So in the end we have the intensity of the beam uh, is related to the um, momentum of the beam, okay, h, h bar k divided by m times the, um, momentum, of the par the momentum of the particles in the beam um, divided by I mean times the um, uh, amplitude coefficient squared, okay? And so um, this, if so for a particular experiment in these, uh, with these sort of an unbound state in the geometries we sort of are indicating here that um, if you know the intensity of the beam, that is if you know the number of particles per unit second passing a particular, uh, going past a particular point in the beam, then we um, then we can, um, that allows us to find the amplitude coefficient uh, for a plane wave that describes um, uh, that beam. Okay, so um, uh, it should probably be fairly clear that um, that with unbound states they're, they're, the boundary conditions don't lead to standing wave solutions, okay? So we're talking about plane waves, for example, and um, and so the energy is not quantized. You don't have the boundary conditions which lead to the to standing waves, and thus quantization of energy. But but quantum mechanics still makes some pretty counterintuitive predictions that go that also go counter to the predictions of classical mechanics. So for example, um, a particle that would encounter a force that would, under classical mechanics, uh, uh, reflect the particle. Quantum mechanics says that that that, that uh, there's some probability that that particle will be transmitted and vice versa. A particle that would normally be transmitted um, in, uh, through a particular region, classical mechanics says that there's some probability that it will be reflected.